I'm Aubrey, and once upon a time, I lived on a little pink sailboat called Little Miss. Over the course of six years, lots of things have changed. The most exciting being our 1977 51 Formosa. She's been sitting in dry dock for over six years, and now it's time for her to see the water again. Previously on Sailing Miss Lone Star, I filled you in on how this unlikely adventure started. This time, I tell you about the path I chose after being faced with a very difficult time in my life. But before we go to the pirate ship, I'm going to tell you how I learned to sail. Hello everybody, welcome back to Sailing Miss Lone Star. Last week, I told you a story about how I ended up on the water living on a boat in the first place. How it ended very sadly and tragically but I made the decision to not give up. So here we are in 2016, I think it was, and I didn't know what I was going to do next. I knew that I was going to move forward, but the path was just really unclear. My choices were return to family and begin to put my old life back together or to continue on and learn how to sail. And that's when Rick Moore reached out from Sophisticated Lady. I don't know if you've seen him on YouTube, but he's been doing it for years. And he offered to have me out and teach me how to sail and help me work towards my captain's license. And what was really neat and special about this was that Rick had two other women on board who were also learning how to sail. So having women around me during this time was really important. So I flew back to California to spend time with the kids and reconnect and just take a breather. Can you hug a horse? Can you read it in English and I'll read it in Spanish? After that, I packed my bags and I headed to part of the Caribbean. And that's when I met Rick and his crew and I started to learn how to sail. This is the bolt that attaches it, and that's where the bleed screw is, so... I began to understand how little I knew, and just how much there was to learn about we're sailing. to keep a couple of wraps on the furler, because we're going to have a lot of wind when we come around this hill, so I don't want to have to pull the sail out just in case. So you can start tensioning that in. I've still got two wraps, it's kind of like half a reef. By the end of the trip, I had learned a lot and I was anxious to get back to the kids and spend time with family and just reconnect with them. It had been about six weeks on Rick's boat and I was just really missing the kiddos. All right, by light of a new day, we are on our way back to the airport. <laughs> it was great to have you on board. We'll see you again, probably. Thanks for coming. Now, before I tell you how I wound up on a catamaran full of female backpackers, let's see what's going on on the pirate ship. Welcome back, you guys. So last season, we took the closed cooling loop out of the boat and we gave it a little spruce up and we made sure that the engine ran. So we had heard the engine run when we first purchased the boat, but we really wanted to get in there and do a little bit of maintenance. Um, but today we're taking a lot of things apart and essentially taking them over to the machine shop. We are gonna do a top end rebuild, basically, because to do a whole rebuild, we actually have to lift the whole engine out. Because if we wanted to do rings and everything, you have to access the engine from the bottom. So uh, we can tell a lot about the engine from the top end. As soon as we remove the head, we'll be able to see the cylinder walls and be able to tell how it is doing. So should we see if this gal fires up before we take her apart? Hell yeah, can we use my plunger thing? Yes. Okay. Sura went to the hardware store and he comes out of an aisle with what looks like a toilet plunger and I say, we already have one of those. And he says, no, we don't. So let's go down below and take a look at this glorious toilet plunger apparatus that we're gonna use to run the boat. Yes, we are running the boat with a toilet plunger. Right, now to find Searle's toilet plunger. It's up on the seacock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, that is something. You've got the rake involved as well. <laughs> All right, darling, fire in the hole. Moment of truth. 
Will it start after a whole season? Woo! All right, music to my ears, baby. Your toilet plunger worked. All right, let's let it warm up and then we're gonna take it apart. So we're gonna let the engine run for a bit, cycle the oil, cycle the coolant in the system, and we're gonna be draining all the fluids out of her in a moment. First step? First step, drain the cooling system. Unscrew here and pull this collar out. I'll probably loosen that as well, otherwise it's just gonna dump all the coolant on this side of the engine. No excuse for excellence. <laughs> <laughs> so, doctor, what is that? Prognosis is, the engine's got cyphococcolitis. <laughs> you want to give this a, a wash in the sink? No. And tell me if that's a new one. In the sink. Wash it in the sink. It's where our dishes live. He has a little belt. We do not know what that's for. <laughs> Let's, this is going to be a fun trivia fact. Who out there, I know there's one of you out there that knows what this is. What is that? And there's also one on the transmission. So what? I'm guessing something with oil because you have to put oil in here. So this is your first part of the engine that you can throw away. And then once we get all the new hoses that are all molded perfectly for this engine, we get to throw away all the old hoses. And we're gonna put new hose clamps on everything and grease everything before installing it. Hmm, all right. Because we've real fancy. So one of the big issues with these engines, if you look over here, you've got an oil cooler and you have a transmission cooler that's just just behind the main heat exchanger and those we don't know what the history it is but if there is an issue with that that would put salt water into an oil supply and that will destroy the engine uh, same with the transmission so we also added new uh, oil transmission coolers uh, just for peace of mind so this rebuild is costing a grand total of $2,300 in parts. And I am going to give Squirrel lots of smooches and buy him two bottles of his favorite whiskey. What's my favorite whiskey? Monkey Shoulder. Nice. Mm-hmm. Whoopsie. Fire in the hole. <sighs> this thing I don't I'm not too much of a fan of this. Uh, what is it for? This hard line for the mm -hmm. cooling. Removing the exhaust elbow. Are we going to keep this gasket? Uh, yeah. Searle has lost the only 9 16th socket. 16th socket. He has searched the bilge high and low. I'm pretty sure he swallowed it. He's not happy. Yeah. Is it time for me to make my debut behind the engine? He pulled out the impact drive for me so that I can get behind there and get out quickly because it's tight. Okay, so what's the plan? That way? What about these right here? This You're gonna have to move forward uh -huh. towards me. Oh boy. <sighs> um, okay, you're gonna pull all these cables out. I know, wait, not strong enough. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Okay. No one died. No one died. Just put it right, right down there. Can you guide it in there? I thought that was gonna be very heavy. So now what? We're gonna pull this whole piece off the engine. Hmm. And when you say... All oh. the rockers are gonna come off the engine. Okay. For the next... Uh, Yeah. 
and just visually checking them out they all look they're pretty beefy push rods so I would have taken a lot to give these a bit of a bend fuel return line she is good this is one of those jobs I'm supposed to have like a beer helmet a beer helmet. No? I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. I think this is not a job for a beer helmet. Well, it's just fingered fingered loose, finger tight. Things just fall pretty good. Alright. You know what's nice? It's like no rust, just really good quality studs. Yeah, really good quality studs. Right there. Right here. Right there. No. Now he's just gonna give himself a hemorrhoid. Oh, your muscles look nice. Silver lining. Should we reconvene after you have your Wheaties? What? It's an American thing. <laughs> <laughs> Leandra's joined us for moral support. <laughs> I love it. What? Your what? <laughs> uh oh. I'm not with the big dogs. Ooh, that worked. The power of leverage, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I have been trying to get out of helping him pull this head out and onto the teeth because it's very heavy. Last time we did this with a closed cooling loop, Leander was actually here, and we went and we found a gentleman in the yard and we're like, hello, mister, can you please help us? But today we had to call him, mister, can you please help us? And he's gonna be here shortly. So I'm trying to talk Searle out of not moving this right now as he's moving it behind you guys. <laughs> Babe, stop. No, 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 paper towels aren't gonna do, I'll be right there. Ah, hold on, let me get something more cushy for my beautiful, irreplaceable teak. <laughs> No touch, no. Babe. Babe. This is you. Wait, hold on tight. I'm using you for a support. Don't touch me. Don't no, touch stop. me. I have Don't to. touch me. No, seriously. I'm not even joking around. Baby. <laughs> Baby, don't go like I might just stop. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> The good news is that the cylinder walls look like they're in pretty good shape. So we won't need a full rebuild. Mm. Wow, fancy. That's cool. Really cool. Diesel's coming out of it. Onto my toes. You know the little pump works, okay? Yeah. Um, the reinforcement. Look at that one. I like I, it's that not one. that bad, it's just awkward. Um, what I found the easiest was just grabbing in the exhaust ports and then in the injector All ports on the here. one side. And then this is Jeremy? Up, Aubrey the muscle. opening up everything. Remember the, the, beauty. the dog door because I almost just fell down the stairs. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you feeling? Uh, good. Good. Eight. An eight. Nine. That is an eight right there. Okay. Oh. All right, you guys are making it look easy. Woohoo! Is the car unlocked? Yeah, but you're gonna have to go open it. Okay. And the dog door is closed again. Uh oh. They're being a little extra today. Just don't forget about that last. Greasy high five! Good job! <laughs> awesome! Good job! Okay, well, you, now let's go back because... to 2017 on a boat called Mahalo. The next offer came by way of word of mouth. One of my girlfriends had let me know that there was an Australian captain looking for some crew to move a catamaran that he had just purchased. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that was black enough, but... I didn't really know what I didn't know. And um, looking back now, Bruce didn't know what he was doing either. You good at it? No. <laughs> I wanna learn. I'm learning.
So I went and joined the crew of Mahalo, which is a 40 foot Fontaine Peugeot. And we had a really good time. Um, we all kind of learned together. I don't know how much Bruce really taught any of us, but we did learn from some interesting and fun mistakes. Um, but that was a time of my life I really, really will never forget. <laughs> Welcome! Hello. So what's happening? Uh, I just quit my job and decided to come sailing. With us! Yay! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and so did Bruce. Fifth member, Ala. <laughs> Oh yes, and the boyfriend fellow. It sort of looks strange from the single. As the cops ride by, I love it. After learning all that I could on Mahalo, I went back to California to be with the kids. It's present day, and we're about to take a very special delivery at the Formosa. The is here. The rig is here! Oh my gosh, we've had about 10 seconds notice. We just rolled out of bed. It's very early. Here's my coffee. Let's go see! It's very exciting! You're a dead man. <laughs> uh, uh, don't you like little surprises? Hey, look at it. I see something in there. What's that? Formosa 51, Maine? That's us. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna pull the first string here. This is the first untying of the new mask. Woo! Do, do, do. It's like Christmas, but yeah. different. They have spools of brand new line at their factory, so they're just like, oh yeah, just cut loaded on like each coast. coast. This, truck, this entire truck is for Selden, right? So this is their West Coast shipment, and they just like... You got this. Are there winches on you? Let's put it on these sours. Ooh, that's shiny. Good job, kids. When the rig finally arrived, I felt so close to our goal. We're almost there, almost in the water, almost sailing again. I almost feel like the boat's watching, patiently waiting for new wings. <laughs> Two, three, woo! -hoo! Now that the rigging has finally arrived, the work is just beginning. Look around the corner. I didn't even see the top one. There's I didn't see the top one, one bald eagle, two bald eagle. Next time on Sailing Miss Lone Star, I'm going to tell you how I found a dollar boat and uh, what it was like getting the kids back onto the boat and living in 29 feet with my very newly learned sailing skills. It was definitely a challenge, but some of the most fun and memorable times of my life. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Sailing Miss Lone Star. Don't miss the longer and uncensored episodes of season 12 on Vimeo. And if you can't wait till next time, I've been creating a daily vlog for over three years, and there's almost 800 episodes. Well, I think this means we have officially made it. Don't spill my beer. Thank you to my patrons for helping me improve the quality of these films each season. You are the heartbeat of this channel. 
For the extended and uncensored version of Season 12, check the link in the description below. You just ate the penis of the Kong. I just ate the penis. No, you just.